Welcome to View from the Top. I am Modeli Sharafa Yusuf. When, on the occasion of his 80th birthday, Al Haji Bamanga Tukor retired from active politics, he said, and I quote, My nation has given me so much. It is now payback time. I want to rededicate my life, time, and resources to the service of our nation as an elder statesman and father. He went on to say that my aim is to help take Nigeria to the land of promise, to, take, to make her truly great and to ensure that she assumes her rightful position in the Committee of Nations. Alaji Tukur, who was among the founding fathers of the PDP, starting from the G34 pressure group and served as the national chairman of the party, said further that during his time, he tried to introduce sanity in the party affairs and the idea of internal democracy party discipline and supremacy, which he claimed are ingredients of strong party systems that drive democratic processes. Given the current state of affairs in that party, it is anybody's guess if the PDP learned anything from its former chairman. A much decorated businessman, Ahaji Bamanga Tukuru now watches the political gladiators from the sidelines. He joins me on View from the Top today, and I want to thank him very much. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, Mondebe. And I thank you for tuning in. Here is a brief account of Ahaji Bamanga Tukuru's life before our conversation. Ahaji Bamanga Tukuru was born on 15 September 1935. He studied accountancy and public finance at the Ahmadu Bello University, marine transportation at the Northwest Polytechnic London, it, transportation economics and statistics at the London School of Economics and he also got a master's in public administration and international relations from the University of Pittsburgh. He worked with the Adamawa Native Authority and later the Northern Region Ministry of Trade and Industry. Between 1975 and 1982 he was the general manager of the Nigerian Ports Authority. Ahaji Tokoro was elected governor of the old Gongola state in 1983. He later served as Minister for Industries between 1993 and 1995. In 1992, he was an unsuccessful presidential candidate for the National Republican Convention. And from March 2012 to January 2014, he was National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party. He is the founder and chairman of BHI Holdings and serves as the chairman of the NEPAD Business Group he is Honorary Life President of the West and Central Africa Ports Management Association. Dr. Tokoro, who just received the Vanguard Lifetime Achievement Award, was also awarded the Honorary Doctorate Degree of Law by the Benue State University, Makodi, and is a Fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology. He was awarded the National Honor of the Commander of the Order of the Niger. You know, recently, the University of Port Harcourt, in partnership with the African Business Roundtable, of which you are the chairman, established the Bamanga Tokoro Institute of uh, International Trade and Development. How will that institution help foster integration of the African economy into the global economy and ensure uh, poverty alleviation? It's something I have been uh, navigating and driving for some time. Uh, you know, uh, in Africa, uh, we always talk and we want to integrate. There are three uh, powerful principles if we carry them along. The recognizing the power of trade, the power of market, and the power of free movement. Market is a place where the willing buyer and the willing seller come together without being invited. And when they get there, what do they do? They conclude trade, because it's mutual. They wouldn't have done so unless they have a free movement. So we encourage this kind of principle to Koha in order to make sure we integrate and prosper. Potako University, the, the institute established there, is a, you know, a do with trade. And trade is mutual. So we believe that that will help. Uh, we are, first of all, 
in Nigeria. Nigeria is part of ECOWAS. ECOWAS to start to play this kind of principles. We have the same passport now. It means that we can freely move within our sub-region. That alone means uh, through trade, we are able to depress what I call peace, really, because when people are working on something which are mutually uh, connecting them, you find that they are at peace. So that was the reason why. It is believed that the new partnership for Africa's development, NEPAD, uh, has made significant progress mm -hmm. in reaching some of its aims, particularly in the area of African ownership and leadership and debt cancellation and so forth. But the belief in many quarters is that after 14 years, the impact of NEPAD is yet to be really felt in Nigeria, considering the fact that Nigeria is one of the founding uh, member countries and one of its highest uh, financial contributors. As chairman of NEPAD Business Group, part of your task is to forge closer contacts between NEPAD and private companies to promote uh, development throughout Africa. What are the challenges, in your opinion, and how can we get the intended benefits, how can we get the real benefits of the NEPAD initiative? I think we have not done well. We should do better than what we are doing. I think the attitude and culture of Africa, or Africans, to really do things independently, alone, is very strong. Now, Nepal was established by the G8, the, uh, what I call, prosperous countries, developed countries, America, France, Germany, and the rest. They believe that in their culture, they want to now give back something to Africa. We went to Montreal in Mexico with the United Nations, IMF, and all the uh, developed nations coming together and say, fine, Africa must be assisted to develop through private and public partnership. Everybody held that. If you remember, they gave five uh, members of our country, uh, that means the heads of state, Obasanjo was the chairman of the group. We thought it's going to be very big after leaving their political seat, things began to go down again. Meaning, in fact, it was not strongly founded in Africa itself. 